meeting. Um, so uh, also there's um, fresh cookies up in the front. If you're you know hungry, didn't get your dinner, you need dessert. So feel free to go up and take some. Uh, but without um, further ado, I'm going to introduce um, Mr. DeSanti from Downs, and he's going to kick the meeting off. Are we not doing roll? What? Oh, take, we, we do need. Well, that was after we take roll. Oh. <laughs> Making sure we have a quorum. Here. 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 All right. Now we'll turn it over to you. Good evening. Joe DeSanti with Downs Construction. Um, I have uh, both of the project managers for Bell for the three buckets. All right. All right. Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, just a quick update on the, on the Pell Elementary School progress. Um, <clears throat> over the Christmas holiday, um, there was some uh, a punch list uh, item. Um, uh, taken care of. Uh, and uh, with respect to what's remaining, there are a couple of uh, items open. Uh, there's some window screens that are coming in um, in the next month. And there are some doors to be replaced, uh, just a couple. And uh, that will be done on February 20th. So that's uh, remaining punch list uh, work that will be done at Pell. Um, <clears throat> with regard to commissioning, um, there's going to be one more um, uh, Verification that's going to be required. They're going to go into the school and just verify uh, by the use of some of the trending data and so on that the, uh, the minor overheating issue in a couple of rooms was taken care of. Um, there will be a systems manual that um, um, the commissioning agent will provide as part of their closeout, <clears throat> and uh, they will be providing a 10 month review uh, over the summer. With respect to um, the irrigation options that are still open, that issue is going to be addressed uh, sometime in April. Uh, there's one other thing that's uh, going on now. They're, they we're trying to uh, come up with some options for some vertical blinds in the uh, Welcome Center. So uh, that'll be ongoing, and uh, we'll come up with a recommendation soon for that. Um, there's also a little bit of that uh, uh, curb settling uh, depression issue that we had in the bus loop. Um, that will be redressed uh, also in the spring. They're going to look for any further um, erosion of, of that situation, reset the curb, and uh, and take care of that at that time. So uh, right now, you know, February 20th, we have the last two remaining items to take care of um, on the books and uh, those couple of commissioning items and uh, those few things that I mentioned uh, in the spring. <coughs> That's it for Pal. Thank you. Any questions about Pell before we move on? Oh, actually, have uh, with all the rain we've had, have we heard any updates from the neighbors? Is their drainage still good and no problems? Yeah, so far we haven't. Heard. Yep. All right, starting with the uh, just a brief update on Rogers High School. Um, so we have the uh, architect slam and Gilbane, the construction manager, continue to work through the value management log. Uh, slam went back to their sub consultants, have provided us with a list of uh, additional charges to make some revisions to the building now that we removed uh, some of the programming. Uh, that item is actually before you tonight as an action item. Um, Gilbane has gone back also and continued to validate and review some of the value management. Um, as well as continue to move on the um, uh, foundation plans right now. So I am going to ask um, Alita Hall from um, Gilbane to come up and give us a brief update schedule-wise. Hi, everybody. It'll be a very brief update. Uh, we have one contractor on site. It's DiGregorio. They're doing site work. The weather over the past few days has kind of made it 
uh, limited the scope out there. It's very muddy. It's very yucky. So um, what they are doing is digging up. Uh, they've already done all the site clearing. We've gotten rid of, like, you know, most of the loom has been stripped and a lot of the site demo and created that road down to the uh I don't know what kind of the existing field, and that's where we're going to be stockpiling the other soils as we dig out for foundations. And that work is going to start in earnest tomorrow. Just the weather today pushed it back. So they will be digging uh, for the foreseeable future with um, the intent of mobilizing the concrete contractor for foundations on or around February 9th. Um, just uh, in addition to that, Gilbane has is going back to the foundation um, contractor that they had procured previously and any other contractors um, working to renegotiate and get us a credit back for some of the work that is not being done. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I didn't realize yucky was a construction term. Yucky, that's in the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions on the construction side? I will ask Kathy or Ted uh, to come up and give a brief update uh, from the design side. <laughs> you did give me the opportunity. Hi, everybody. Kathy Ellethorpe from SLAM. Um, as Joe mentioned, we are uh, on our way through the value management log, picking up all of the um, items that are in there. There's a few that we have to have some dialogue with. Uh, with you all about, but they're minor in scope at this point. Could you explain what a value management log, just because we have a lot of... Sure. So, um, what's a value management? So, a value management log is a, is a listing of all the things you could possibly do to bring your costs down. So, it's scope changes and tweaking of things that you could possibly do. And we put them, every single one we can think about, we put on the list. Even if we think it's not something that anybody would even like, you still have to think about it because it might take you on a path to a different idea. So there is a very long value management list that the Gilbane team was nice enough to um, be in charge of and keep track. And every single one of the items on there has a, a cost associated to it. And it's been put into categories, whether, you know, because some of them are just non-starters they go right into the rejected column for for a variety of reasons others go into the maybes others go into the absolutely yeses and these are in after conversations not just by us in the design and construction team but after talking with um, the leadership group that we see all the time so that list has been vetted and in concert with the working group did i get their name right um that was established um that list has been pared down to I'll call them the essentials that get the project back within your budget scope. Um, so we are working our way through them. And the three big ones are the ones that you've heard before. Um, removal from the construction project of auto um, cosmetology and central office. So those three pieces of the building have been extracted from the design documents or are being extracted. And, um, and uh, along with a variety of other uh, lesser uh, impactful things, I'll call them, um, to establish a project scope that is within the budget parameters um, as we go forward. And there are some things that get structured into the documents as we move forward as alternates, because depending upon how the bidding goes, hopefully you will have money to buy some of those things as we go along. So it's, it's a, a combination of changes and possibilities of options that you could um, bring back in as time moves forward. Is there any questions to that? Um, for the value management log, I know that we had, um, I think it was 12, 14, or 19 was, I think the last one that was sent out. I, I might be- I, Of the date, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't, just wanted to check what the most recent version of it was and like what what the title was to make sure that I was looking at the right thing that we all had. Yeah, I don't believe there's a, another revision since okay. the last one, but if but actually it's a very good question. Um, so the value management law, although it was developed by everybody and vetted through the, the working group, we always assign one individual to it because and it's, it's an Excel spreadsheet. We wanna make sure that someone is managing it. We uh, assigned um, Gilbain, Tony Mergita specifically to it. Uh, what we will do is he wasn't able to make it tonight, but we'll ask him uh, to please send out any latest revisions. Uh, we're not aware of any major revisions, but 
I, I think it's appropriate for us to send it out at this point anyways. Okay. And then I, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but I know that what we're going to vote on later is that how is that affected by the value management log? I'm not sure. I, it's not necessarily affected. Okay. We had talked a little bit about this when we voted on the value management log, that there would be additional cost on uh, to do some revisions to the building afterwards. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. But. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, I also think we might want to mention that at this point, we do not have the money in the plan to build a field that is going to be um, with, you know, artificial turf and the field house and the, uh, the snack thing we wanted to build. So that money is also not there, as is three parking lots. But track, right, track, track and the field. Right. So just so everybody knows that, that we're going to be another thing we have to find money for. Two programs, track and field. Central office. Central office and the parking lots. Correct. Yeah. So I, I think to, um, to your point, that we should just redistribute that value management log just to remind everybody at a high level and also about those alternates too that Kathy had mentioned. I was going to say, and some of those alternates that Kathy had mentioned you know, are obviously smaller compared to some of those other ones you just mentioned. And based on the uh, potential renegotiation of, say, the concrete or the, the demo, which now that this building is not being demolished, then you know, potentially could save some money, which may add some of those other things back. Yes, potentially, yes. Yep. So we are getting prices for them so that yep. we will be able to add them back in and know what it's going to cost. Um, they, so they'll be like add alternatives. Correct. Did you have anything else? Me? No. Yeah. So um, any other questions for SLAM? Um, the other thing I did want to update uh, the group on is that um, we did make a submission to ride, the final submission. Um, just to remind everybody, we have three submissions that we have to make to, to ride and get approval from to ensure that we get our reimbursement. Uh, we did a schematic design many months ago. We did the design development and just recently did our 60% construction documents. Those documents did have central office, cosmetology, automotive in the field, but we did provide a narrative as well as the value management log and a budget that shows that we are within budget, which would allow Ride to review, approve, um, and allow us to uh, eventually procure. So uh, they're, in, they're under review by Ride right now. Hopefully we'll have a comments or some feedback in the next couple of days to a week. Any other questions before I move on to the next item on the agenda? Okay. Uh, we did want to inform everybody in, as well about the NAC Tech building, the building we're in right now. Uh, it is going to be here for an indefinite no, uh, period of time after the new construction is done. Um, that is going to present a couple of challenges. Uh, we can't uh, complete the roadway as previously thought, and we cannot bring in the utility as we uh, previously thought. So we are looking at those challenges right now. We do have some workarounds. What we're trying to do is make those workarounds permanent as opposed to temporary um, changes so that there's no additional cost. Uh, but we are working through that process right now. And the direction to both SLAM and Gilbane is this building will stay in place um, until after, the, and even after, well after the, uh, the new building's done as far as their direction is. Joe, I had another question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I know that when I was, I filled in for Kendra at one of the value management, value management log workshop meetings. Definitely just butchered the name of that working group. Um, <laughs> but I, and, and I know that some of what we discussed was like the plan forward from a more detailed perspective on um, auto and Cosmo and track and field and basically like how we are, what we're doing to try and plan to fill some of the, the gaps in the longer term. And I didn't know if that had been talked about more with the, um, within that working group or if there had been, if there's appetite for more discussion as to how we as a um, building committee want to approach that. Kind of looking, I guess, at Becky and Louisa more than at Joe. Yeah, we talked about actually putting a group together um, to strategize different things, you know, different ideas. There are initiatives I'm just going to talk about that are going on that um, 
we are applying to a grant right now for Department of Energy to maybe get some of the um, things that are taking us above code that are energy because it's going to be a very efficient building. So that's one thing. There's um, we have we are working with the school department looking at potentially we said stage one thing can't apply because our enrollment is not going up as the city, but career tech center is a regional tech center. So an area tech center. So we're getting um, Mr. Young to put together some of the enrollment numbers for that because more like Pell one, you know, you build it, they will come. So we're trying to pull that together as an option and uh, Mr. DeSanti said February to get that forward or September because now we know that the NACTEC building can stay for a bit. We, you know, we're not really in a rush to get that out necessarily. Um, we want to make sure it's thorough and so on. And, and you were talking to Ride whether that was really a potential to look at it from a career tech growth standpoint. Yeah, again, we just have to show increased enrollment or additional enrollment. Uh, we can submit a stage one, whether it's February 15th or September 15th, if we believe we can meet all that criteria and, and show a necessity right. for a need, which right. we, I believe we do. So that um, get on that one, what makes us think that it applies is that we used to have like tuition income of about 225000 and now we're up to a million three, and it's just been growing and growing. So with the new building, it seems very possible that that could be done. We have to do it in headcount. So, um, and then with, um, you know, different, different other initiatives, I think that it's worth all sitting down and trying to figure out. I, I know talking to the mayor and, and, the school uh, city council, they're trying to pull together initiatives to go forward to our delegation asking for things. And that's, I know, one of the things that's been talked about. So, but go ahead. And we've also reached out um, through the superintendents and also through all the school committees to see who's having the same problem because, you know, there's, um, you know, if there's numbers of us having this problem, you know, we might get a little bit better traction on getting money. So that's another thing we've done. And what? Legislative. Legislative. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're working it from all angles and we, you know, we're always looking for community donations too. So. I guess I was just asking though, more from the perspective of develop it, whether or not the building committee, it wants to have more of a focus on how to do that as an entity and as a body rather than necessarily putting the onus entirely on the leadership that just, I know that between this and, and school committee and there's a, a lot going on and I just didn't know if there was any thought to broadening yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. We talked about this subcommittee and, and I'm thinking you're the perfect candidate right now <laughs> as you brought this up. <laughs> Right, and this is why you're not supposed to yeah. open your mouth we'll, and we'll put something but. out in an email, and, and anybody that's willing to work on this with us, you know, um, we we'd be happy to have your help. So, because you know, we're just getting taken it off the ground right now. Can I ask a question? Um, how does um, keeping the NACTAC building though affect our reimbursement? I mean, doesn't that have an effect on the newer fewer? And that is, does not. It does not. Does not. Although we are had applied for that, it, it does not. We've had some discussions. And we're talking about expanding programs, but if we're going to keep this building, how are we going to do that? How are we going to? Lynn, can you clarify what you mean by expanding well, programs? More programs than we have right now? Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I, I guess my. I, I, my understanding was that we're talking about expanding programs and is that no, filling programs, programs really okay filling, 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 programs. filling the programs all, okay they're not all full but at all levels and so on so if we can uh, keep okay. them okay. there we just want to keep the ones we have, especially the ones that serve the majority of our students and that's where we're challenged at right now. I just have to say COVID has had an impact on that enrollment too so Right, but some of our freshman class um, coming in was really full in, in the different programs, which is really, you know, um, heartening. Three that are full this year at the entry level, and we haven't seen that. So the demand is high. 
So I do want to go back to keeping the NACTAC building since we have, we've talked about it a couple of times there. I, I, I don't want to minim, minimize the impact. Um, there are going to be some challenges besides the utilities, which we think uh, we have a solution to as a permanent solution. Um, but there's also going to be some challenges. The existing bus loop that's been designed would have brought the buses up through Old Fort and, and out through the front. Uh, that's now going to be changed. Um, as well as the field that is designed right now, although not currently in, but will be an alternate, uh, cannot uh, and will not fit um, as designed right now because this building is right at the edge of where the track would be. So there still are a couple of challenges um, that we would have to continue to work through if this building stays for an indefinite period of time. So the next item I have is action items, if there's no other item. Okay. So we do um, have a proposal from SLAM uh, for added services for construction documents. We asked them to break it down by their subconsultants. Um, so we had an idea of what they are. I think overall uh, we had vetted it out, reviewed it. Um, we did have uh, some issue and some discussion with the PAR proposal um, for a number of reasons. Um, we were clear on exactly the scope and the cost. In addition to that, um, there is going to be a need for them to do some additional work to keep the NACTEC building here and some utilities. So we're not sure if they fully had all the scope in, as well as we had some uh, comments and um, questions on their proposal. So we are recommending all of the added services to uh, for the value management design, redesign for SLAM, with the exception of PAR, which was uh, a $96,575 item. So we're, our recommendation is to accept the proposal at $158,610. Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Okay. So moved and Second. Second, seconded by Kendra Munter. Um, is there any discussion on that? I just had a question because it. I assume that I can understand the answer, but it was saying that um, if the if it was accepted by 116 that we – um, I guess if accepted later than 116, there would have to be um, changes to when they can begin. Oh, never mind. But then I kept, I missed the part where you updated that to 124. But that's the new change. Okay. Is it still unauthorized? Until you say yes. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait. Yeah. We have been working. I so I will say that knowing how critical a lot of this is of getting documents out on the street so that the Gilbane team can keep moving, we have been working in good faith. We have already given the bid package to revisions to the contractors so that they can start taking the three pieces off of the foundation drawings because right now the contractors are under contract to do that work. So our team has actually, again, in good faith, launched our work and, and has been doing a lot of it already. Um, we do need, to, we will need to talk about a delivery date. I'm not really prepared to talk about that right now um, because the NAC Tech building has staying, has put a little uh, monkey wrench in our, our site component. Um, so we have to go back and, and give you some different options. So, um, but the building piece of it, we are moving ahead with and, um, and we'll be prepared to get those out soon. So, so Ted is getting ready to bundle that steel package the end of the day tomorrow. Um, we gave our team until the end of the day, a structural team in particular, um, to get those documents to us. So they will be ready to be distributed Wednesday. Um, so again, we went ahead and did the work, even though we hadn't been authorized, because we really, really do understand how critical the schedule is, and we don't want to be the people that are holding that all up um, when we trust that you'll approve us. <laughs> so in addition to that, um, SLAM is working on what the building will look like, which will be slightly different with uh, the three programs uh, eliminated, um, and that what they'll be doing is coming back in the next... Well, I guess we'll find out soon. Two weeks? Okay. Yeah, with, with potentially 
an idea or ideas on what the new outside will look like. And we don't expect it to look drastically different, but um, you know, there, there needs to be some revisions now that we're losing uh, some parts of the building. So Kathy just said the next time we meet, which is actually next Monday. Is that right? The 30th? No. Uh, was just, that was oh, just yeah. okay. So we do, you're saying that that's not going to be our next meeting. That's part of. I have it on my calendar. Okay. All right. Thank you. So two weeks. Yeah. So is there any more discussion on the motion in front of us? Okay. Hearing none. All voting members, raise your hand if you're in favor. All those opposed? Okay, it passed unanimously. Thank you. All right, the last item on our agenda, um, and then we do have a brief presentation um, for the neighbors as well, is the existing um, gym discussion. Um, it's actually more than just the, the gym. It's, it's the changes that'll happen, right? So a lot of the existing site work that's not might not change like this, the field. But specifically, I guess um, we could talk about the gym. So there's been a list of questions that have come out and, and I will read some of them and try to summarize them. Um, and then we could certainly have some discussion about it as well. Um, so the first question is, do we have a cost estimate for demolishing the gym? Um, and what would that be? Um, and it looks like it's an approximate cost of about $190,000 that we would be savings. Do you have a cost to renovate the existing gym? And the answer is no, we do not at this with this time, what that cost might be. Well, we certainly can look into that. Uh, do you know what extra expenses would be incurred to keep the gym as, as is without any rate renovation at the, at the time being? So I guess the short answer for that would be um, if the existing gym stayed, which is going to be very difficult to do at this point for a couple of reasons, I'll, I'll point those out in a minute, is that we would have to run separate utilities being power, sanitary, storm, which would mean a complete redesign by our site civil, which would mean potentially more bioretention or something like that. So I think there would be a big implication to that um, because we would need, in order to do that, you need land to store the additional water because now you have another roof structure um, that you would have to make sure that we have that rainwater go somewhere. So that would be some investigation we'd have to do into that. Uh, the fourth question, do you have a sense of what extra cost would be to make the gym building a self-sufficient space? I think that kind of ties in with number three that I just talked about, all those other things we would have to do, separate utilities to it, um, figuring out what we would do with the rainwater, um, it has been suggested the building could be used as community space for multiple activities. I mean, that would be a, a community discussion, not necessarily construction. Uh, do you have a plan date of demolition? Um, the answer is yes. The current plan is to begin um, after the February vacation uh, in the 23-24 school year. Um, if the gym is to be demolished before the new gym is available, do you have a plan on how classes and team sports and activities will take place and where? Um, I think the answer is yes, but I think, uh, I don't know if Newport Public Schools wants to answer that question as to where, where the kids would go when the gym is out of service. We have tentative plans, we don't have any idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But aren't some of those plans and mitigated by the fact that some of the, the programs that are now gonna stay in here, the building's a little bit small in the back so you can extend the life of the gym while the new building is being built. There, there That's is, what I see here. Yeah, there is a potential that the gym could stay up a little bit longer than what was initially scheduled, yes. Yeah. And, so, and that's always been the case. I'm seeing some people with physical faces. Yeah. We've always known that that's what's going to happen. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's, there's, that's no change yeah. as far as the gym was always going to be out of service at some point. Um, and there's been many discussions about we're going to try to keep it in service as long as possible. Um, and that's still the discussion today is that, you know, right now it's planned for February of next year. But we're going to try to work now that, uh, you know, some of that space is available in the back. We don't have to get as close to it. But there certainly might be an opportunity to keep it a little bit longer. But, but it used to be this summer. Uh, it used to be next yeah. this next summer. Correct. And now it went to. February, yeah. and we're looking to try to extend it even a little further. 
Yeah, that's correct. I'm sorry. Thanks for clarifying that, Ms. Wilgren. And let's see, the next question was, is there a real concern about participation numbers will go down during the interim as a result, some students may lose their connection? Um, and that's uh, not a, a construction question. It would be a question somebody else would have to answer that. There's a concern that if, if there's no gym, if the participation in gym class or anything like that would be um, somehow impacted, I think is the question. I think the intent is more, you know, Sports, sports, basketball. Sports. Yeah. yeah. So we would have to, with the backup plan, have um, alternative, I'm sure, supports in place, as well as looking at the schedule on what when and children are taking health versus PE. So that's another concern for those in the audience. Hi. For those in the audience that don't know, students are required to take certain periods and certain semesters of health as well. So that's something in long-term planning we need to know. The good news is it's not coming down in 2023 of the summer. We've pushed it out now to February of 2024. So now we need to look at classes, course selections, students, and then we also have to work hand in glove with the AD who already has a nightmare as far as the shortage of fields we have in Newport for our students. And now we're going to have to look at alternatives, reaching out to our community partners, Salve Regina and Middletown. For those of you that are not aware, presently, Middletown, Newport, and um, Salve Regina are doing a needs assessment right now for the fields and uh, for facilities and fields for athletics for all three of our communities to see what we can do to collaborate better and to use more facilities for more children as best as possible. So we're working on that as well. Okay. And then the last thing I'll touch on is the actual gym itself. Keeping the existing gym would be, uh, there would be a lot of implications, similar to what we're seeing here with the NACTAC building. Uh, as a result of keeping it here after a new building has been designed around it with the anticipation that it was gonna be demolished, uh, there's a lot of implications to not only the new utilities coming in, but again, trying to keep that existing building on some type of separate utilities. Um, there would be a significant implication to, um, to the rainwater and trying to determine how we were going to capture that water, where it was going to go. Uh, although this is a big site, we've had some challenges just with the, build, the new building alone um, and where that would go. Um, if we want to keep the area up here where the new field is going, we certainly don't want to use that area as a bioretention. Uh, we want to stay away from the wetlands, which is right to the other side of us as well. Um, so I think there would be a lot of uh, implications to trying to keep the existing gym. We would lose the parking lot, the new parking lot that would be constructed in the back. Um, we're already going to have a challenge with the existing bus loop, which we're going to have to create a bigger loop in that back area temporarily, permanently, depending on how long the NACTAC building stays here. Um, I, I just don't see a path that would be easy and not costly to keep that existing gym. Yeah. And then if you remove the gym that was a new building, you would have additional cost to redesign that building as well and do something different with that space. So we can open up now to discussion. Um, amongst, okay, just yeah, identify. Right along, what you just said, doesn't a McAdam parking lot provide runoff water as much as a roof? We would still replace, we would have to replace that parking lot with another parking lot somewhere because we have to have a certain number of parking spots. So we would have to grade another parking spot plus have that additional roof space. So I, I agree that if we eliminated the parking and just had the gym, yes, but we have to replace we that parking. We would have no water problem by eliminating the parking lot and just leaving the gym. But then we wouldn't have a parking lot. We need, by regulations, to have parking on site and bus. The buses need to be on the site. So we'd have to find another area to put that parking lot as well. I have a question. I just wanted to know what the cost of the demolition of this building was. Is that written down somewhere? I don't think we have it. Do we? are talking about the demolition. About 300000 roughly, as round numbers, for a net. And okay. it was 190000 to demo the gym? The gym, correct. How much was it for the auditorium? Oh, I didn't see that. 
study for that one. And maybe it's about <laughs> 170 ish of them remembering numbers. Really? Well, the, it's the abatement primarily. Yeah, abatement money. is um, is a big driver. The ceiling, the plaster ceiling in the dome there was you know high. <coughs> all of the floor mm -hmm. tile and ceiling tile and all of the pipe insulation. And all so that the, we've been working out there for two to three weeks, banging it, and we had spent hundreds some thousand. I can't believe that. Oh, that might be on the abatement side. That's what I mean. That's, I wasn't prepared yeah. for that one. It might have been more like three. That might be one piece of the number. It's a number I saw in my head. But you're right. I could be plucking maybe the demo or maybe the abatement. But together, that one's probably to your point. Yeah. Jim, I thought the Jim would be a lot more than 100 and change. Like so, a yeah, lot so, more so, than 100 it's, change. Because it's kind of big and wide open, and we do have the abatement report from Fuss and O'Neill, the environmental consultant, so they know what's in the space as far as, you know, remediation and things. But to take it down, I'm talking about taking it down and have nothing but dirt down there. Everything's can gone. You, Leader, can you smoke your sound on this? I can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Okay. It's really about time and equipment. So once you get the the abatement done and you get the building clean, now you just got big machines kind of munching away, right? You guys all saw the auditorium come down and there's just a certain fixed period of time that it takes to pull that down and then they segregate it. They get a lot of, they do get costs for recycling. So like the breakout number for that is about a hundred or 200,000 big round numbers for the gym. But that bid is based on, they recycle the steel, they segregate it into different piles. So there would be some impact on the actual credit that you would get because you know there's there's an offset there for what they would have made to kind of carry that number so that's why the process goes that way and that's why the dollar value may seem low to you but they again part of their demo bid is based on what they can recycle just dis, um disperse and and recoup some funds <laughs> And again, so what was our overall demo number for everything? The overall for everything, gosh, I want to say it was 2.7 was yeah. the base bid. Yeah, so this, the, the demolition, the entire campus was two, it was under 3 million, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, which meant the abatement and the demolition of the entire campus, all those, all the buildings up here. Yeah, that's right. Yes. I guess I just wasn't under the impression that the gym was never talked about as being saved ever in this process. I think a lot it of us was. have a sense that there's strong community support for saving the gym. It's a beautiful building, beautiful gym. Quality. And it's just in the last couple of weeks of realization that our thoughts on that were never really taken seriously and sort of hit home for me. So, I'm, uh, my question is, was it ever really seriously looked at that we would save the gym? Uh, the answer is yes. Absolutely, it was looked at. There's a set of plans that we could go back and provide you. We had, uh, I think, two different plans at one point to save the gym because we were all supporters and proponents of trying to, to keep the gym. It, yeah, it was in one of the original plans, too. So we, we've... I no, I said what well, we don't have a number for the renovation of the gym right now. We did we had design documents that we reviewed initially that included keeping the gym in place. We had a general overall cost for it. This we're talking about well no, let me let me be clear. You're talking about schematic design documents and high level estimates. We're now talking construction documents that are very detailed and we could tell you $190,000. It was not, we were not at that level at that time. We did explore looking at the gym numerous times and it was brought to the, to the building committee. It was made public. It was something that we all, and I'm saying we, we, I'm talking about the architect, the construction manager and the OPM all supported as, Hey, can we use any parts of this building? And the gym was one of the ones we did explore. And ultimately we couldn't do it. We just couldn't get the building to work around it. We couldn't get any of the facilities to work around it. And ultimately that decision was made by, by this group, not yes. the construction. That's correct. And we did spend a lot of time probably two years ago in this room. I remember having very similar discussions with community members about the gym and the, you know, the impact it has on the community, the emotional weight of the gym and, and all of those reasons why it was desirable to try to save it. And it just, we couldn't make it work. And I don't know, I was really surprised personally to see this come up again after we had already gone through that two years ago 
with having these same impassioned conversations, but unfortunately coming to the conclusion that it's not, it wasn't possible then and it remains not possible now. All right. We also looked at the auditorium. Uh, one of the, the first yeah. charges is we were going to look at the auditorium, the any of those big structures we wanted to keep as much as possible. The auditorium, unfortunately, was deteriorated to a point where it just was going to be too costly. Um, but we vetted out both of those um, big spaces. Right. And I'm just going to say some of it was um, the square footage that were allotted. And uh, we'll go to slam on this one, I think, is that because um, you had to rebuild as new uh, because of the situation of some of the current status. Maybe you could talk to that um, or maybe you don't remember it. I don't know. But um, there was but the size of the gym today with it with the sides and so on is bigger than some of what we have planned in the current one is my understanding. Maybe Kathy, you can talk to that a little bit. Yeah. And that was a challenge. The other thing was accessibility and life safety and all that stuff that we had to bring the, the that building, that part, that gym up to the current codes. When you renovate, you have to bring it up to code. Checking my facts with Ted. Um, the the playing ground floor, not not counting the upper decks, um, in the existing gym and the new gym are the same size. Um, it's not any you know within a little bit, um, but they're essentially the same volume of floor space uh, that you have now. If that helps. Questions have been asked, and you can just answer for the public to hear. How much seeding is there on the bleachers? Because I think it's over 800 now. But I'm going to ask Ted. 860? It's above, it's yeah. in the 800 range because we wanted to make sure that we could seat all and of your during a game students. It's different. It's less. It's a bit less. If, depending upon how much of the bleachers you're pulling out, if you pull them all the way out, they come over the sidelines so you can't be playing basketball at the same time. So they don't pull them all the way out during basketball games, uh, but you could have an assembly where you're essentially having your entire population in the one space at the same time. Wood, wood floor, yes. Yes. So I want to just say, I was going off um, Mr. Means um, comment about, we never planned to save the gym. So okay. that's why I was bringing that. Yeah, we we did that. we did I and and we we were charged with you know can we save the auditorium can we save the gym and we we were all supportive and behind it, um, and you know we came up with a couple of plans and it, it just couldn't work they just couldn't get the rest of the building around it, and and part of it is is that you know we look at schools differently now they're not traditional four walls anymore they're more bigger open spaces. Um, so that you could have adaptability, you could have, um, you know, different type of teaching than the traditional having all of your desks facing forward, right? So, you know, as we design new buildings, they're designed differently. So it's hard to fit a square piece in the rest of the new building. And, you know, and as I said, we, we came up with a couple of different plans and it was unfortunate because, Honestly, we were looking at it from being more cost effective. We thought it would be, you know, a lot easier. We could build a build, build a building if we could use a gym, and and unfortunately, it just it just didn't pan out. Okay, here are the two numbers. So it's 560 seats um, for the bleachers at a basketball game, and it's 840 seats total if there's no game going on, and there's 12 rows of seating. Um, how does that compare to the present gym? Oh, it's a smaller, yeah. a lot smaller. Yeah. Each bleacher now holds 100 people based on you're doing that 16 inches. Pull out, that's 1,000. So I mean, it's, it's, it's the number seating that you get, and that's the realistic seating of what you actually see when you put people there. I, I will say, too, that you have to meet every ADA compliance and every, if you renovate a building now and you start that, you, I mean, you get to have exemptions if, if it's an existing building, but the minute you start renovating, we're going to, we will have to hit everyone. Right. And that was one of the challenges with the gym and the auditorium uh, because of the seating, too, is that we would have to go in there and remove a lot of the seating in the auditorium. And the same thing with the bleachers. We would, I think we had to put more exit doors out there too, if I remember, so we could meet the egress. 
uh, there were a lot of challenges with it to, to bring it up to today's codes. And a new roof. And a new roof. Is the foundation of the gymnasium sound the uh, concrete? I don't know if we could answer that question right now. I don't know without looking at the structural existing structural report. I know that there's some deterioration on the backside, of, but I don't the know. The backside of the foundation or the backside of the walls? I, I don't know. All I know is from visually so you can see a, from we the have backside. A gymnasium that supposedly the foundation probably is sound. Most likely, I, I would assume, and that under that assumption, I'm saying, uh, you, why can't it be a separate building? We talk about runoff water that can't be um, channeled uh, through piping and wells and so on and so forth. You can't take that water off the roof uh, and uh, direct it in the direction where it belongs. You can. The problem is, we need somewhere to do that. You need somewhere. So to we would that. have to. Can that building be a separate building in itself? standing not with the current design of the new building without the new building being redesigned and the utilities to I'm it talking they about can, the gym sitting there by itself it cannot that it we cannot. would not have a parking lot and we would not be able to fully construct the rest of the building and bring the utilities in currently as it stands without redesign and additional cost and that would mean that additional cost would be well number what? one we would have to go back and redesign the, and go back to ride them and tell them that we now have another structure that's going to be sitting there that we have to design for the uh, water runoff. Um, and we would have to look at what those retention areas might be. We may have to lose the proposed field area because we need a retention area there. So they, they don't want you to run off water off your site. So we would have to build something on site to hold that water, retain that water uh, for a period of time. And right now we have those for the new building. We'd have to build more to keep the gym building. That's just one of the challenges. You would have to build more for the square footage of that roof. Yeah. And the square footage of that roof is going to be that much more runoff water than what we could possibly hold on the retention uh, ponds that we'll have now that you it, in the plan. Oh, I, I would say absolutely it would be more than what we would have right now. They are not, not designed to that. hold another yeah. roof of that size. But the new gymnasium roof we have it in the plan for the new gymnasium roof that will hold that water. Yes. And so if we eliminated that new gymnasium and the, kept the old gymnasium, the square footage of the roof would be very similar. Uh, I think there's, they're different in some aspects, but, but then, but, but you're forgetting one's part. You eliminate that gym. You now have to redesign the building again because you've lost a, a large space. That, comes pocket. that that new oh. building is significantly designed around right. to, the to gym. showcase the gymnasium. To the showcase gymnasium. the gymnasium. So if you take that gymnasium out, it, it, it's just not going to be English too small. Yeah. Just one more piece of information that Ted just reminded me of. The mechanical systems that support that building, meaning how it gets its heat um, and whatnot, are actually in the other building that would be coming down. So you would have to establish new mechanical systems to uh, keep that building going. You seem to be awfully stuck on this parking lot. If we're taking down all these other buildings, can any of them become a parking lot? That's where the proposed field area is going to be. How big is the field going to be? It's an awful lot of space over there. It's, it's a large I mean, field of track. Everybody park. We have the um, yeah. We have a, a presentation that we could just we could show right Maybe now. Maybe we should show the presentation and see if we have more questions too. Do we need? Can we adjourn? Yeah. Actually, yes. Well, right. The the gym specifically. Can show yeah. I just heard you say that the superintendent said there was never a plan. Can you clarify what you said, please? You said earlier in the meeting that the gym, keeping the gym was never in the plan, was never part of the plan. The plan we have now. Right. Correct. That is correct. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry. 
Yeah, I think I think that for clarity, I think that even at the last building committee meeting, I said we could keep the gym longer. And I think people heard something different at that point. I think that when we talk about the gym was not in the plan, meaning that the existing plan, the building gym was not going to be in the plan to stay after summer of 2023. So it's just I think it's we're, we're talking about what's happening schedule wise. And I think people are hearing something a little bit differently. Yes. I just had a question on the cover of the Newport this week was a picture of the same picture and it said that the gym would not be demolished. So yeah. I, it, and that was, I, was I saw that too yeah. and I'm so, not yeah. sure so where that came so from. I like, oh, I, I'm here, I'm the owner of this meeting, so I wanted to come and say to all of you that a line in the article, I guess the longer uh, was extrapolated and yeah. that was an error on our part and I apologize to all of you for it personally here thank you <laughs> yeah it, it was very clear we're going to keep the gym longer and even you know one part of this whole thing that most of Newport agrees with all right we do you have a question the doing what's best for the future generations and also the taxpayers. That's the people who care about it. Well, well, keep it. I've given up, all of us here have given up five years of our life to say that we don't care is insulting mm -hmm. because we do care greatly yeah. Yeah. about I, this project. I do want to say I appreciate I all the hard work the community has done in the last few years. I, I guess we're guilty of inertia, but we're also, um, I have in my head that because it was such a community, everyone I've talked to said, I want to save the gym. I thought there'd be, there was just um, a sense that, oh, somebody else is going to take this on. This is, couldn't possibly happen that we're going to lose our gym because everyone feels the same way. And a few weeks ago, I thought, oh, we haven't done anything and we're going to lose our gym. And I, but I, at the same time, I appreciate everything. I think we all do. Appreciate all the hard work and the challenges that you have all faced during this. Thank but you. And still like to save our gym. Yeah, I, and I, I, I tell you, we would have liked to too from a cost perspective. And I know our, de our lead designer, who's not here tonight, was one of the ones that really looked into it and came up with a couple of creative ideas. And it just, they just, it just couldn't work. I also think we should try to reframe it. Like, yes, we're, we're not, just, we're not losing the gym necessarily. Like, yes, the gym that exists is not going to be here anymore, but we're getting a brand new building with a brand new gym that we're going to build brand new memories in and brand new community spirit in and all these things. Like, yes, there is loss, but there's also so much that we're gaining. And I, I understand that there's sentimental value in the gym. And I think, you know, we, we all felt that weight when we made the decision as a committee to move forward and lose the old gym. But we are gaining so much with this new building. And I think we should try to keep that in mind in these discussions. And as we think about, oh, we're losing the gym, we're gaining a brand new building that's going to mean so much and be so beautiful and do so much for our kids. And I think that's important to remember. And, and also we're, we're, well, we're trying I, to bring, I don't, I don't. Let me say one additional <laughs> note that it didn't get mentioned. Mm. There were some reasons why Kendra mentioned them. Um, one of the other factors, and not to pass the buck, but was the restrictions by the state on how much square footage you could have. When we started this five years ago. We had this grandiose dream, and then all that went through the process with the teachers, the administration, and the community, and we had to get that pared down based on the number we assumed our student body would be. And certain areas were restricted to certain sizes. Now, I will tell you, East Providence just opened up a year or so ago. I went to bring my daughter to a basketball game there last year after she plays tennis in East Providence, after her tennis class. And by the time we got there, nope, it's not big enough. And that's East Providence. So we are not the only school district that's dealing with this size problem, but um, these are restrictions by the state. And then it's not to say we couldn't as a community say, Hey, city council, we want <laughs> extra money at, that that the state won't reimburse because we love it that much. But 
And the fact is, our community doesn't have that kind of money either. So to go along with that, why can't you just turn the the gym over to the city council so it's no longer part of the school? So the reason I'm standing here, I'm sorry to interrupt this. I just want us all. The thing that saddens me every single day is the voters asked for a new state-of-the-art, fully integrated career tech center with its academics and the plans and everything. Eventually, after we found out we couldn't keep the gym, we are $20 million short mm -hmm. and we have to take out programs for children mm -hmm. and we still can't do that. And we don't have the track and field. One of the things that gives our students a lot of scholarships for after they leave Rogers High School. So those are the things every day I wake up wondering about and how we can solve that. And I just would hope that after tonight or whenever, we all come together and try to figure that out. Yeah. How do we give the community what the community voted for? So I'll sit down now. Or what will be or could be for our kids and because we will have a gym we will have something that's integrated within the school kids will not have to go outside of the building in order to which is another safety issue so i mean is there could we just look at what has been designed sure but i also want to add that you know we carefully took all the um you know big flags down and they're going to get dry cleaned and, um, and they're gonna go back up. And also the um, trophies, and we're putting in trophy cases. So it's not as if we're trying to wipe away the history. How about the situation where the, you have the weight room upstairs on one side and you have on the other side, netting for batting cages, golf cages, so on and so forth. Where is that all gonna go? So we, we have space for the batting cages that are, um, the nets are hoisted up, dropped down in the gym when they're using those. We have a fitness room. So let me just point out a couple of things on this elevator. So we, we only brought the front because we thought we might be explaining to you the little piece on the front that goes away. Um, Cause the, 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 the front of the building is the piece that stays most intact when we take the three components off. So the gym, the windows because they're around the corner there's a, a long fitness center that has the weights and all the fitness equipment that has windows that looks out towards Wickham that's accessible through the gym and through the hallway on the other side the piece of this front elevation that goes away is the automotive which is at the very far end of that door down that corner is that that corner at the far end is the only piece that um changes on the front view of you know what most people see as they drive by the new building. Um, so we, we had brought that to explain that to you tonight because we thought that might be of interest. Um, but we don't have any we don't have any floor plans with us tonight. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, and the windows in the front to expose the gym to to residents and pastors buyers all got added to to get more visual um, appeal to it. And they turned the um, bleachers to the side instead of against that window so that they could get more seating in. Um, and I believe, I mean, I know East Providence is a much larger high school. I think they have like over 2,000 students at it. And I think our gym is going to be, for, for our size, significantly larger percentage-wise. And looking, when we've gone by, um, Becky and I have gone with others a couple, several times, and their seating, their bleachers don't look like there's very many at all, I have to say. So I think we've been really trying to create, um, the gym gets a lot of attention and conversations, would you say that? Um, Principal Vance, right? So um, we're really trying to, because we know how important athletics are for all the students, keeping them engaged, keeping them going. Um, but it, it's critical that everything is integrated well. Um, that is a hub of the building, along with the commons in the media center, which is the library to many of us in the past. <laughs> but um, anyhow, that's all. Question, um, I'm looking at the gymnasium now. A lot of windows there. Yes. 
Just on that front corner, yes. Just on that front corner, the front corner that all the sun comes in. Uh, we have fritted glass and we have um, sunshades as well, exterior sunshades as well as regular shades. So that was definitely taken into so account. The maintenance of the shades. Um, They're motorized shades, like shades. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when those motors go out, there goes the shade and so on and so forth. We're coming up with another. So, I, I, I'm only speaking for myself, but I think the point that I, I'm trying to understand is we're looking at this gym that is really well made. It's been here mm -hmm. since 1958 and it doesn't seem to have one, you know, I'm talking about the floor, you know, whatever. And then it just, it, I, again, I can only speak for myself, but it just seems like things aren't made the way they used to be. You know, like people buy washing machines, you know, you used to have them for 25 years. Now you have them for seven years, you know, like, oh, gotta get it fixed, you know. So as we look at this new and improved and, and, you know, I, I'm just looking at this quality. It's not the sentimental, mm -hmm. it's the quality. I just feel like, you know, you're going to this new gym, you know, like what's the fee of the maintenance? Like, what are we going to do when those motorized things all break down and then the floors buckling and the, you know, like all these little Well, the floor better not be buckling. And that's another big problem. <laughs> right. But, yeah. you know, I, I just. No, I understand. I, I, I understand the question. And uh, so one of the requirements of ride is that we give you a 50 year building. Does that mean that the, every motor on every roller shade is going to last for 50 years? I would not tell you that, yes. <laughs> um, but that is the intent, is that we're not providing um, a, a, an insignificantly built building. It's supposed to be able to have a very robust, useful life that can be adapted over time for 50 years. And that is one of the things that when Ride does their reviews, they look at. And believe me, we get along the way lots of comments about... Um, making sure that we are that we are providing products that are robust and cost is a, a big factor but we do not skimp on things that have to you know stand the test of time going in with why telling you what you have to have and what you can't do or have you uh that's the same people that told us that pell school had to be x size that we had to put an extra 10 million dollars on to make it bigger because it wouldn't fit what do we do in this case when this one's up uh where it doesn't fit, because now we're scaling it down at least 20 million, but I believe the council also kicked in 15 million on top, so that puts up around 35. So I'm probably looking at 50 million over the 94 that the taxpayers approved. What do we do then? Well, all we could do right now is the building is being designed based on what the demographic studies show and enrollment show over the next five years. <laughs> um, if, if, you're fortunate and you have more children start coming back, then, then that's, you know, an unfortunate thing. And you're going to have a similar situation to what happened with Pell. Do you have a place for expansion? The, the building. Walk. Yeah. This building is like Pell was easily expanded yep. going down. So we knowing place? what happened with Pell, uh, we actually, the, the design includes spaces that the, it could be expanded on as well. And that space that can be expanded on won't pick up the water coming off the roof of the old gym. I'm not sure what that means. Well, if you've got room to expand, that means you have to have some place to put the water. There. That's right. You would have to design those bioretention, but I'm not, I'm not sure what that comment means. Honestly, I really don't. I'm not being well, sarcastic. I just don't understand what that means. The water coming off that gym is not a problem. No matter what it's, it's a it's a significant problem right now in the world that we have to design to. The civil engineers have to design to a standard and not to have any water runoff. That water runoff has to include bioretention. We can't send water off our property to the other properties. We don't want to do that. So in order to do that, any structure that stays here, we have to manage the water on site. So if we need a parking lot and we want to keep the gym, we have to manage that water. It's a challenge. It's an issue. That's all I'm bringing up as it's it's something that has to happen. The question is, where do we do that? I, I don't know right now where we would do that. So also in the in the last few years, the legislature has mandated that 3% of our budget every year go to maintenance of schools. <clears throat> so, um, and, and they check on it to make sure you're doing it. And so I will say right now, we're really keeping up on all of our schools and the maintenance. It's, um, I feel very proud of that. Well, and just to shout out what Becky and Louisa were saying earlier when we were just talking about NACTEC and everything about 
going and working with the legislators, um, the, the school committee and the council to try and figure out, you know, plans forward and everything that applies to things where we're not exactly happy with some of the ride regulations. Like that's part of those discussions that the council and school committee has because no one's going to sit here and act like everything is perfect, but we're building a building to provide education and be a core building to our community. And it's not going to be the per- most perfect school building that's ever been built, but it's going to be a good building and it's going to give us what we need. And I mean, I thank Colleen for what she just said about like there, I think there's a lot of stuff that we still have to work through and we've worked through the gym. I hate to sound callous, but we're not keeping the gym. It's not like the, this, the, the school building committee has voted on it more than once and we need to just keep moving forward on how to figure out all of the other things that we have to work on that, you know, I hope at the next school building committee meeting, we have all of you folks here for that too, where we talk about, you know, NAC tech and we talk about how we're going to figure out the underground utilities and all of that stuff. It's not always like big, sexy stuff like the gym, but it's all, it all matters. Yeah, so we do want to present some other items. So the other intent for the neighborhood meeting that we thought you guys would want to know is just kind of the short term where we are with the schedule. So we talked about it uh, a little bit when I gave the up- update. The yellow road here is the, oh, I'm so sorry. I did not realize that was the touch screen. Uh, that yellow <laughs> road is the pointer. Oh, I moved the whole, oh. You moved the building? You moved the building. The building does not go there on top of the building. You do like an unhealthy night. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. Yeah, that works. I do that a lot. I am so sorry. Do not say that. I'm so sorry. All right, I'm going to talk more of that. At least he's not a little closer. Crap. What's happening? He just like threw it away. He just threw it away. I'm going to put my hands behind my back and I'm going to talk just to the colors. <laughs> The yellow path that is shown there is the road that I was just talking about. That's an access road because all of the soil that's within the green building footprint uh, needs to come out. You need to get to stable soil to put a um, you know, foundation on. You can't just put it on you know, the loom and, and seed and plantings that were there. So we are moving out loom. We are moving out other material to get to a suitable subgrade. And that is a daily operation. Should take probably a good couple months, honestly, to get that stuff out and then bring in new material. So stuff will come out. You'll see stockpiles going on in the parking lot down there, the west parking lot, where we'll start bringing in the new material that will sit as the base for the gym. So again, that will start. That'll be over the next month or so, preparing for the first area, which is in this bottom left corner here, to start with the concrete foundation work. So um, again, there's no trucks they're not driving this material on the road you'll see trucks on the road but they're just driving to the site like you know they got to get here so our main construction access gate will remain over here this is shown as a gate but it'll be secondary it'll be you know emergency it'll be if you know something happens we need to get out but our main traffic in and out will be total opposite of where the school's main traffic sits right now we'll be down on that end of the site and so again, ongoing is that work upcoming, which I should have probably reminded myself. Our trailer is going to move. Gilbane Field Office trailer is kind of right here in the back now where the auditorium is. We've ordered our, you know, the larger site trailer to house our staff. It will be right near the entry of the gate. That'll help to prevent people from just wandering into the site and, and things like that will be closer to where the actual action is. Kind of like we were when the auditorium was there. We were right there, but now we have to move because the main access is moving. And then again, we'll be prepping those foundations will go in and everything that we'll be doing around the site, we'll be prepping for the steel erection, which um, we're still trying to work on the date, honestly. So um, right now it'll be the foundations are the green, that's the concrete that goes in all around. We'll put a pad all around the building of like crushed stone, stuff that you can travel around that you can work off of with platforms and stuff to put up the, um, the finishes and the siding where it goes. And we'll set a couple crane pads Still, still try to work that out again. The the, the um, timing of the gym, we have to kind of evaluate now, kind of where the crane might go. We were thinking of working in out, so it, it's ongoing. It it moves like you know, construction is very fluid with um trying to find the best way to get things done. Can I ask that the concrete when do you start? Pouring? Right now, we're targeted. Um, the the current schedule date is on February 9th. 
But honestly, over the past week, we've probably lost a few days to the to the mud and the and the work. So again, we're weather dependent work. We we kind of have it accounted for. So we monitor it. We'll we'll get to a good point to start and and it'll. But around that time frame, mid February. So if I could add, so I just I just want to be a, a little bit more clear. So. And it's two trucks, right? Two dump trucks that you're running right now? Yeah, we yeah. minimize. So just for the neighbors, over the next couple of months, you're going to see two dump trucks that are going to be running on the property from the front of the property. It's going to come down right alongside this building, and there's two trucks that will be running a good part of the day, every day for a period of time, taking material from up above as they dig out and bringing it down here to where the existing field is. So they're two large dump trucks, so you'll be – seeing them but it'll only be what's the work hours for them are they done by three seven to three thirty is about approximate time those are the big besides the excavation and the foundation work will be going on the only other real activity that'll be running back here are those two dump trucks so what is that sullivan yeah sullivan, sullivan that's right yeah you're right so it's it's really important that if anybody sees anybody you know coming through or in behind those fences, you know, like kids, they're not supposed to be there and that you need to call, you know, if it's during the school, you know, day call. I know, we're looking for the during the school day. Well, you never, I know, no one's supposed to be in there. It, and we had that problem at Pell. Kids got into the building. That was after know. hours, yeah. After yeah. hours, yeah. right. Yeah. Call, call the police. So. Yeah, it's it's not a good place to be. Yeah, we're not going to let them do it during school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to go in there. No one is to be in there. Well, that's but, different. Um, Does anybody have any questions? Yes. I wonder if you could uh, go over what the kind of ultimate goal is with the uh, where the existing track is or was. You're probably turned on now. How, what's the long term? How does that? What does that end up being? Uh, that's, how, do we get, how does it get there? What's the time? So, as far as what's happening on that field, I don't know. That would be a city question. That's not part of our project. They're giving us permission to go ahead and stockpile material there. Uh, the school has no. It's not part of the school property, so it was not. It's not a. a school property issue. The city, like I said, has allowed us to stockpile material there. They potentially be able to use that material, whatever we leave there, if they want to sp uh, spread it out or have us spread it out. Um, that's fine. But, we're, but we're, it's not part of this project right now. So that's a, a city project. Someone from the city would have to answer that. But there's, a, there's a potential track. There's a field. Field. A potential field, not a field. track. Why not a track? I don't That's why we couldn't put the track there because it's too unstable. That's why it had to move. It had to move because they couldn't stabilize it with the issues of that area. Yeah, if I recall, the structural engineer could not provide us a guarantee that that track would not move in the next couple of years because of the the material that's under there. Tree stumps, landfill type things. Uh, they they were organics. There was, I guess, there was a quarry there at one point as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 But they said it could be a field, a grass field, um, and so it would be up to the city. And I think that's been discussed, but it's not a high priority at the moment. After we deal with the contamination. Right, it would have to be capped, and that's why we're leaving material there. So there there needs to be additional work done there if it's going to be a field. On a bigger picture, uh, at some point, the uh, when the thing was originally built, the city felt it necessary to do that because there was a rationale for doing that. That the, the, the school needed a track and field. Did that rationale go away? No. no. Shouldn't the city contribute a few bucks? Or do something? <laughs> 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 We have a lot of problems right now because we need the 20 million for the building, and then uh, we want the synthetic turf field that will be used much more than a grass field. I understand. And then that would be the next priority. So it's just it's down the road before we'd be ready to do any of that. But it's but definitely it's on. It's definitely on the radar. Just should, so should the city be? There? <laughs> you're, you're, it's easy enough to say that's not our problem. 
It's the city's problem. But the city did help us with the additional um, bond premium, uh, the 13 point something million. And, uh, you know, and they have not, we've not been into serious discussions yet about how we're going to solve this issue. Yeah. Well, we've, we've started them. I should say that we've started them. Yes, in the existing field, there's contamination. Nobody was allowed somebody. out on it. Correct. So, so it's contaminated, so now we're going to put a lot of good soil on top of that. No, so we're going to remediation, it can take a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, in order for you to, to utilize that, what you would do is cap that uh, site anyways, because you would never be able to pull out all the organics, the tree stumps, and everything else that were down there. If they were thinking about putting something there, you know, if it was possible, would they, wouldn't they cap it before you put the new soil on? I'm not an engineer, I'm just saying. There, 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 there is a cap there currently, but the cap is not sufficient to today's standards. Yeah, there's a thing, right. There's a lot of areas where there's sinkholes. Yes. Um, piggybacking on that, in the area where you're starting to dig that green area, yes. you know, there's a lot of areas where you can dig green area. Is there any concern about any contaminated soil in that space? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you just sat down. I could have just told you to ask. Uh, well, it's honestly a design team question. Like, we only we get the documents and they let us know where there are. But from the documents that we have right now, there's not a concern that there's contaminated, like, you know, by the viral definition, but we are taking uh, samples. There, are, There's a grid where they need to take for environmental testing. It's every, every what, 600 and, oh, what, 650? Yeah. We, we grew every, every so many square feet. <laughs> We're taking environmental samples, right? When we get to the level before we start building back up and there's samples to test for, you know, just residential levels of um, contaminants that are not allowed to be under the school building footprint. So we are doing that testing and anything that's bad, we would chase out to the limits. They would, you know, we dig it all out and make sure it's clean. And then we build it back up so that underneath this building and on this site, it'll be all clean. There will be no contaminated materials. Because we have a vapor system. Okay. I'm, I'm only asking because I live at the end of Sullivan Street and right near the track. And so I see the the trucks and so I'm just yeah. it's kind of close to my house so that's what I just wanted to <laughs> yeah, ask that's just like you're directly <laughs> affected yeah really that's really not great well, yeah, but to that <laughs> point, right, I'm assuming if we did, because we're testing in the actual whole location. So, yeah, if we found something in the whole location, that would probably mean that it corresponds to something that we dug out. And we would definitely do that, again, through the environmental consultant from the design team. They know all the proper protocols. And, and we, Gilbane actually has an in-house environmental who, he hates when I call him an expert, but like literally the stuff that he knows on recall, he is an expert. So we, we are very well-tuned to environmental consultants. Perfect. Thank you. Anything else on the slide? No, we just had those two, our okay. elevation and elevation. Okay. I go back to my question before, and I guess it's helpful that you have this up with the uh, the red line, the green line. Is there a certain buffer zone that needs to occur between new building and the gym? And that my two part question would be you're saying February of 24 that the gym would have to come down. In your best guess, how what's the percentage that, that could be pushed out to the summer to keep it for the remainder of the school year? Second part of that, how much time is needed to clear that building? You're saying you need to demo in February 23, but does it need to be cleared four weeks in advance of all the equipment and things that are in there? How much usable time is there actually? So there's roughly probably a call it a three month window for the abatement and then demolition. So you have to get the abatement and as they come in, the environmental people come in, they take air clearances. They make sure that all of the, all of the contaminants, anything that could be floating around as best as loose particles, that they're not in the air anymore. Cause again, that would go up in the air, right? If you demo it. So there's that process between that and the demolition, it's roughly three months. So if we don't start that until the summer of 2024, that's three months. That's the entire summer. There's not, there's not really a pet. What's February 2023? That's when everybody has to be out, or that's when you want to demo it? No, February of 2024. The original Sorry, 24. plan was that the building came down this June, and that was because there was an extra little appendage here in the building where the building foot, the gym building was actually in the new building footprint. 
So now that um, that was brought up, the areas that are being co coming off based on the value management log, because that issue, because we no longer need it gone to construct the building, we've been working with the district at the request of the superintendent, the co-chairs, to try to keep the gym for as long as we can that's feasible to not impact the schedule. So uh, Joe said after February vacation, but we actually would want it the Friday before February vacation, because ideally we would take that week with no students on site or limited students on site, and that would be when we set up fencing, staging, just in areas to create a clear buffer zone between construction and students so that when they came back from vacation, we would begin the abatement process and begin the demolition. Yes. And, and unless I just miss you say it, one of the other things is you need to be able to get a crane back in that side. We you know, right? need to, yeah, Which there's- you couldn't get with the gym there. We, we, again, we have to evaluate it with the steel contractor. The original intent was to have two cranes, one working from, you know, either end of the building. But now we're thinking that we have maybe two working both from inside the footprint out. But again, that's, that's until we lock in with a steel contractor, we can think all we want, but that's really their means and methods. And they'll come in and they look at it as the puzzle that it is and come up with the best way to get it in place, you know, to adhere to how they bid it and, and whatever they plan on doing. So, but again, they'll have to work within the site restrictions. And now that we'll be saying to them that that gym is not coming down, that'll be one of the things that they plan around for the crane. So, um, so one of the other major concerns for taxpayers for the uh, funding of the project is that the sooner we get the building somewhat complete, the city is able to be reimbursed starting with their housing aid. If we had this done and we had been staying on schedule, June of 24, if we finished, the city could start a year ahead of time getting back funding that, well, getting housing aid that they weren't expecting. So we were trying in good faith collaboration and also to help everyone in this room. Um, we were trying to get that completed by that because now and we are now looking at the February 24 date uh, for the gym, we have to always keep in mind that any delays, no matter what they are, have a potential of a huge financial impact because we have to have the project wrapped up in a bow December of 2025 at the very latest. That means all the financials. That means walking through the building. That means we've been in the building. We've occupied the building. We know the ins and outs of the building. Doesn't mean we walk in the door December 1st, 2025. We need to get in there before then. So that's something we always have to keep in mind too. And every time we make a change, we have to go back to our architects and to our construction people and they have to go back and they have to look at the plans. We have to resubmit plans. And that's when the calendar starts to kick in. Then we have the environmental people come in and then they start to look at different parts of the property again. And then they start doing their little examinations and we keep our fingers crossed. So there's a lot of intricacies into all this. I just want to remind us all of that, you know, with great ideas and we all want to try to, we're a community. We want to do what's best for our kids now and in the future. But at the same time, we also need to remember the financial aspect and side of this. And again, how do we get what we started to want for this project back into the project? Thank you. It does. 52.5% reimbursement. Yes. So, um, so this is no consolation, but when they were going into the gym, we had them specifically looking at the flooring to find out if it was a uh, glue that was a um, harmful, you know, and toxin, and it's not. So there's the possibility that we can pull up pieces of it and, you know, and it, it maybe do a fundraiser um, just for people, you know, so that, anyway, that's just something for our community to think about if somebody wants, you know, to try to take that on. We don't know how hard it'll be to get it up in big pieces, but we did we did explore that, the or how much it will cost. It was like the auditorium ended up costing way too much to do it, but so we're <coughs> definitely looking into that. Marty? Um, you, you might have said this already, but um, I'm just curious. Um, I'm sure you know that this is all a Hail Mary by us gym savers, but um, <laughs> the final decision not to include the gym 
Was that based on the structural structural soundness of the gym, on how you know that building, and how much it was going to cost to repair it, or was it based on rides square footage deal with getting the funding? I think it was based on a number of items. Uh, one was the existing building, what it would be needed to bring it up to code. Uh, number two, designing a building around it, right? I mean, as you can see from the plans before, that gym is front and center. It's part of the school. It's part of the heart of the school. The media center is right off it. The cafeteria is right off it. I mean, it, it, it's a big open area. So getting that gym to and build a building around it was going to be problematic as well, and as well as getting the utilities. And if I recall correctly, I think the elevation drop off too was part of a problem too, and having access around it. Because one of the other things we want to do is we want to provide an access for the fire department to get around, um, and and also to maintain the building. So there's there were a number of it wasn't just one; it was a number of factors. Um, and again, we we were. We were all big supporters of it. We were really hoping to do it because it ultimately we thought it might save some money, but it just it, it ended up costing more money and it was going to make the design of the new building much more difficult, if not impossible. Do you have the gym plans here? We do not have them here, but Sorry, I thought you said you were going to show the plan. No, the new gym or the old gym? The, the original. Yeah, I don't think we have the gym planes here with us. I think a lot of the information is on the website. Um, if you go to website, there's a lot of the drawings and stuff. Um, if you go back to a lot of our previous meetings, there's a lot of information there as well. Could you just, just discuss some of the amenities that will the new gym would And could you, um, Kathy, could we put the website up just so everyone knows what it is? Or like have Joe say it? Or I don't I want to make sure everyone knows where to go. Yeah, I'm sorry. I met Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kathy. Also, at this point, too, if anybody wants to be on our building committee updates <laughs> that come out every Friday, we're at, we just finished number 72. So that's 72 weeks of updates. Um, we'd be more than happy to include you. Just make sure you give your email address to Mrs. Nash, and we'll get you on them. So I'll run through the highlights of the all of the PE components that are in the building, and Ted can remind me of the ones that I forget about because he's been more intimately involved in the uh, in the meetings with all the uh, staff people, um, and Jared can remind me as well. Um, so obviously we have the gym. The gym has the center court with the, the bleachers when they're pulled out, 500 and something people that can watch a, a premier basketball game. Um, the gym can also be divided in half. There's a divider curtain that rolls down and you can play basketball cross court. Well, again, real court length sizes, um, but obviously with the bleachers pushed in, in that case. Um, we have the batting cage. Is it a batting cage and a softball cage? Two of them that come, that can, that come down from above. They're always permanently installed. They drop down. Um, we have a fitness center that has weights, treadmills, rowing machines, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, um, as well as an open area for yoga or other stretching activities. There is a full complement of um, locker rooms for the students, which also include uh, spaces for the teams to use at the different times of year, so that there are team rooms in there as well. There's a trainer's room, uh, so that when you have a trainer that needs to tape up a child or ice them down, all those kinds of things. There's a separate room for that. There's separate rooms for the um, athletic and PE uh, staff. And there's also a separate room for any uh, officials, referees that come to um, participate in your sporting activities. They have a place to you know, get changed, have a restroom, and uh, I believe there's a shower in that as well. What did I forget? Storage. Oh, yeah. Yes, so every, everything is on one level as opposed to now you have the upper decks, so we don't have upper decks, um, but we do also do have um, a, a couple of really robust storage rooms um, so that all of the equipment that needs to shuffle in and out of the building, um, there's outside building storage, so it's not intended to keep hurdles and things like that, but the other, all the other um, equipment that you need to support in, in the inside activities do have um, two big storage rooms for that. So. How many of those uh, um, 
activities can go on simultaneously. So you could play two basketball games at the same time in the gym I, when the batting cages are down. I don't know what else you do in the gym at that time, but because <laughs> they kind of come down across the middle. Um, so they, you know, it's set up for two gym classes at any given time because they they might need to be able to do that during the day. Oh, yep. There's also a large screen that comes down. So if they're having a uh, an all school event or any kind of event, it uh, could be a community event uh, in there. There's a large screen that drops down so that you can project onto that. And there's a sound system in the space as well. It's the same size floor plate. So I, I don't know how to answer that because I don't know what the four things are that go on at once. Oh, the upper levels. Yeah, you won't have the upper levels. So whatever they would have done up there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's adjacent. The door, there's a door that takes you from fitness into the gym. Could, I could you also tell them about the auditorium that's going to go in? The theater. The, so there's a theater. Um, we've been calling it a theater as opposed to an auditorium. Um, it, it has just under 400 seats, Ted, is it? 380 something seats, um, at, which is accessible off of the learning commons, which is the main, I'll call it large, not a rotunda because it's not round, but uh, main space that when you first come in the building, either from the front or the back. So you can, and that space also has a, a wall at the back that can be opened up so that you could have overflow seating um, set up into part of the learning commons or the, um, sorry, the dining commons and, and have some uh, additional view down to the to the uh, the stage area, so there's a you know a full platform stage. I don't want to call it a stage because it doesn't have a thrust stage and all those overhead things, um, but it is definitely a, a stage um, in every other sense of the word. There's yep. Yeah, because that was for community events. That was we know that was important. For and the events. decision was made like two years ago that we are going to air condition the school, so it can be used during the summer full-time. Mm -hmm. So when I talked about putting every idea on the VM list that you could, the value management list that you could possibly think of, that was on there and it came off real fast. But if, if anybody ever sees the full list, that's why I want to say that because there is lots of things that go on to that and they literally, every single one gets discussed as to whether they're appropriate or not. Yeah, I'd also like to say when we were working on the value management, we were very careful not to touch. Like we made cuts to a lot of places and we made sure to try to mitigate anything we touched to the athletic, the gymnasium, the trainer's area, the fitness rooms, because we knew how important it was. And it actually was kind of painful to see that we were taking, thinking about cutting classrooms, but not cutting anything in the sports arena. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone's happy, I want to make sure that everyone knows that everyone's giving up a little bit of something in this building, unfortunately. Yeah. Any more discussion? Is there any cookies left? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there are. So some consolation. Uh, that concludes our update and presentation. Are you dead? Sorry. And don't forget to give uh, Mrs. Nash if you'd like our weekly updates. They're very informative. Yeah, all in favor. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah.